decided to see him. Good morning, y'all. Hey, good afternoon. I know um, it's kind of hard to take me in a museum a couple times. This is my after dark. Uh, <laughs> my after dark imagery. But hey, listen, y'all. This bursitis is kicking my ass this morning. And um, I just really, really, really want to relax and do this video. And I don't really want y'all to see me struggling the way I'm struggling. Um, if any of y'all ever had an issue with bursitis, you know what the hell I'm talking about. It is nothing nice. I had to lean my behind over the bed um, to even get some relief to get some of that pain off that burser. So, y'all, I'm just trying to make it do what it do. Uh, but listen here. There was something... And I really, really needed to uh, 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 get off my chest. And, um, mm, mm, mm. Ooh. and, uh, uh, y'all's is going to help me do it. Y'all going to help me get this off my chest. Um, but actually, it's really not a matter of me getting something off my chest. Really, you guys, it's a matter of me trying to explain something, which is um, uh, the pathological care. Okay. Uh, we got to be able to, what is pathological and um, child abuse? This is a particular... Um, a, picker, a particular conversation I was having with a um, few parents that are in my group. And, uh, you know, I, I try to explain the difference and do a little advocacy. Um, but to understand the pathological care of children, you know, and to know the difference between child abuse. So... What we did last night was we stated at least one difference between pathological care and child abuse. Um, and we described how risk to the well-being of children as presented in the media is different than real world risk to children. Okay. Um, we stated at least three behavioral red flags that could indicate that a child has experienced pathological care. Okay. And then I think lastly we wanted um everybody to try to define define what resilient means. But what is resilience? Okay. Um now let me explain pathological care. The the primary cause of attachment disorder, this is not Simply bad parenting, though, uh, it involves repeated and severe abuse and neglect of a child. Examples of pathological care, care include, but are not limited to, physical abuse that causes injury that happens repeatedly, sexual abuse that is repeated and sadistic in nature, sexual abuse almost always causes problems later in life, but it does not always cause attachment disorder, okay? Extreme indifference to an infant or child's needs. Again, the neglect is usually extreme, repeated, and long-lasting, okay? Uh, repeated moves between caretakers. Now, 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 you got to remember now, though, that, that, you know, not all children are going to respond the same. And no two children react the same to uh, to the same situation. I mean, you know, there's variances and stuff. Okay. So, pathological care, the damage done. About 80% of families who show patterns of severe abuse and neglect will produce children with serious attachment issues. So... See, this shit goes a little bit deeper than just you don't know how to, it, that you let your, you're a bad parent, in other words. <laughs> I mean, it goes a lot deeper. The, 
the long line of negativity that it can cause for future generations because of your ineptness or your inability to get in touch with your mental health, it, it, it really leaves a dent and a scar in the community uh, because it affects so many. Uh, about a million new subscriber of substan new substantiated cases of child abuse are reported each year. Y'all hear that? A million. Put these two facts together, and this means that potentially 800,000 children, probably more, will begin to develop serious attachment problems this year. Because they all go together. You know, and all this stuff you hear people talking about, they can produce a lot of children and uh, uh, have a lot of um, different mamas in different environments. And all y'all think that this stuff is very healthy when it's really not. Uh you are developing children with these type of disorders when you are not able to constructively, uh, I guess, uh, parent and uh, be there for your children to on a consistent basis. It's just not just a matter of having money. Cause I hear a lot of people say, well, so-and-so got that paper. If they got paper, they can do whatever. Not when it comes to children. Because we're dealing with such vulnerable minds. And science has really proved to us that uh, children aren't really developed. No young person. The brain is actually growing until you're 25. So a lot of y'all that think it's okay to have sex with girls because they're 14 and 15 because they do it in other countries that means you still like having sex with babies because they're not developed they're not developed and there's something wrong with you that you think just because a, a woman a, a little girl his body is developing and she's able to have a period then that means she's able to have sex and she should be then that goes to show you we have so much um, education that needs to be done in this community because we are turning out people that are void. And that's basically, these are the reasons. I mean, early detection and intervention include removal of the children from the home if needed. You know, you have to have quality uh, care homes, you know, in, in, some, in most of these cases when you remove these children because um, you don't want to jump right out the frying pan into the fire. You have to keep, you know, changes to their care taking and caregiving to an absolute minimum. Okay, because that's just more confusing. But the environment that they're in has to be changed. It has to be, um, it has to be dealt with and they have to be removed from it because there's no way in the world you can get well with sick people all around you. Okay. So between 1975 and 1995, the number of reports regarding abused and neglected children increased. Um, matter of fact, I'm asking y'all this. What y'all think? Uh, it, true, true or false? Between 1975 and 1995, the number of reports regarding abuse and neglected children, do y'all think number one, A, it increased, B, it decreased, C, it stayed about the same? Okay. Increase. Okay, so if, if, if you didn't know. Okay. I mean, this is some serious stuff, y'all. This is some real, real, this is the real at-risk stuff that we're seeing right here. And, um, you know, but the, 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 these are signs that we need to be looking at, at, at more things than we are and how this affecting our generational trauma, how it's affecting us, especially those of us as Adolf's. Um, descendants of slaves because we're a different breed and I keep saying that 
Okay, so like true or false, most reports of child abuse are found to be substantiated after investigation. Okay, that might be false. Okay. Uh, rank the following causes of death in children from most common to least common. School shootings, child abuse, car accidents. Number one is child abuse. B. Number four, rank the following forms of child abuse from most common to least common. A, sexual abuse, B, physical abuse, C, emotional abuse, neglect. What y'all think? For teenagers, which risk is greater, being abused or being the victim of violent crime? Wow. You had to make a choice. Facts behind the myths. Who is most likely to report child abuse? The child, a family member, a professional, uh, meaning a mandated reporter. Number three. Uh, two. At what age are children most vulnerable to being abused? And is it infants, zero to one, preschool, one to four? C, young school, age five to 11, or teens, 12 to 18? Um, uh, which of the following people is most likely to abuse a child? A relative, a parent, or other caretakers, foster parents, teachers, etc., strangers? D. Um, a parent. A parent is more than likely to abuse a child. Right? All right. Injury inflicted by other than accidental means. This is physical abuse. Physical indicators. Okay, so y'all know bruises in areas other than knees, elbows, nose, and forehead. Um, small round burn marks, fourth inch in diameter, bite marks. In infants, brain swelling and damage, mental retardation, development delays, blindness, hearing loss, paralysis, and speech problems. Sudden death, those are all indicators. Behavior indicators. Aggressive, withdrawal, says they don't want to do things that they really want to do. Blames themselves for their parents' actions. Defiance. Those are behavior indicators that your child is suffering from abuse. Definition of sexual abuse. Intentional, first of all, intentional touching of intimate body parts directly or through clothing by any body part object with the purpose of sexual de degradation, humiliation, sexual arousal, or battery. No child under the age of 16 can legally give consent to sexual activity. regardless of the age of the other person involved. So you hear that some of you guys, um, just so you know, it's against the law. No child under 16 can legally give consent. Some of the indicators are pain or swelling in the genital area, STDs, pregnancies, or the triad, fire setting, unusual um you know, animal abuse, folk um, of feces and bed wetting. Okay, that's the triad. Some of the behavior indicators, those are physical uh, um, indicators. Some behavior in, uh, indicators you might want to look into would be um, self harm. Do they mutilate? Talk about secrets a lot. Sexually aggressive, touching on other children. Sexually manipulative and promiscuous. Those are all um, behavior indicators that your child has been molested. Abused, I should say. Is sexual abuse of children caused by an adult seeking sexual gratification or by an adult seeking power and control? That's the question. What 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 y'all think? 
What do you think? Is it about somebody trying to seek power and control? Why are we seeing more sexually problematic behavior in children? Uh, there's increases in child abuse. Two, premature death of parents or parent figures. Three, increases in drug and alcohol use during pregnancy. The sex industry is striving, especially for children and, and weirdos that like to uh, see children involved. I mean, phone sex, telephone numbers are easily assessed by children. In fact, sex is marketed to children and teens on purpose by people who want to make money. Um, head injuries, that's something to look out for in early childhood. Non-empathetic parenting. If you have a parent that's always telling you to toughen up, uh, don't cry, boys, don't cry, shut up, you gotta be tough. Uh, all that's non-empathetic, and that is very harmful to a, a child, especially a male child. Uh, parental fear of the child. Parents resigning when their child reaches 13 or 14, they done because the child had got big, the child might challenge them a little bit more or begin to talk a little crazy to them, you know, and so as opposed to them seeing it as a stage they're going through, a lot of them just resign. I think that's what my mom did for me. I think she really resigned uh, when I reached about 13, 14 years old. Um, uh, Messages that teen sex is a choice and a wide acceptance of this choice. See, this is why um, we have such problems with our children is because a lot of people are giving them the impression that it's okay to not be fully developed mentally, but lay your tail down somewhere and be sexually active because you have a period and because your body is changing. Like you ready for the next step, but you're really not. Not right now. Anyway, the following factors tend to put a child at higher risk to harm others in the home or community. Beginning sexual harmful behaviors at a very young age. Use of force or violence in offending. You understand what I'm saying? These are the things that we put in our own community at risk when we do these things. We just re-traumatizing ourselves. Large number of victims, large number of offenses. Um, we usually have non-sex related uh, behavior problems, particularly criminal behaviors. Poor school attendance and poor grades. Use of pornography, poor social skills. Oh, yeah. Um. Uh, Few or no social support, family ties, I mean, drug, alcohol abuse or use, mental illness, and a family that abused all that type of behavior is normal. As normal. Mm. Wow. So, let me stop right here because I want to do this in two parts. <laughs>